Presley and today I wanted to make a video about some mistakes that Magic the Gathering stores make. Uh, so basically some mistakes that kind of cause their demise or something that might cause them to have a huge riff in whether it's popularity or sales or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so we all know Magic is a very immersive kind of game. There's Magic Online, there are Magic cards to play, you can deck build, you can buy altars. There's a lot of different kind of areas and uh, different pathways you can take when it comes to Magic. Um, and because of that, to open up a magic store is a really good idea. There's a lot of stuff you can do there. You can kind of expand on what's already there. Um, you know, you have lore, you have art, you have so many different things that you can kind of offer. So as long as you are, um, you know, kind of going by tips to really make sure that you're not going to make these mistakes, um, I think you're going to do just fine. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually ignoring wholesale costs. So you want to make sure that you're actually staying up to date with what everything costs and what's expected and what's going on because if you're not paying attention to that and you're kind of trying to offer a different sale or offer um, a different price, maybe a more expensive price than others, that's not going to go over well with your audience and it's um, not going to sell either. Um, the next thing I want to talk to is falling in, or it's failing to target gamers. You want to target gamers. You want to target those people. You want to target the people that are going to receive your information or receive your products or your store in, a, in the right light. And gamers can definitely do that. Gamers know what they want. They know what they're looking for. Um, and they're already your target audience. So it's easy to make sure that you're keeping them happy. Um, and the next thing I want to talk about is lacking a social presence. If you're not really in with your with your company and you're not really ever at your business and if you're not actually showing any kind of um, tie with this store that's going on it'll definitely kind of bring your um, situation down uh, because people definitely want to see your face they want to see that you are a store owner they want to see that you're involved they want to see mostly or most of the time it's usually they want to see that you actually care about magic and that you actually play it or even if you don't play it that you enjoy the cards or the altars or you enjoy collecting you know for whatever it may be there are a lot of different people that do a lot of different kinds of magic things you know some people do play magic some people don't like to play and they just love the art style so they collect boxes on boxes on boxes and you know, either way, you can take advantage of that kind of target audience as long as you're making sure you're doing it in the right way. Um, another one would be failing to host events. You want to make sure you're hosting, like, whether it's Friday Night Magics or, you know, things like that. You want to host something that kind of brings people together and reminds the community that you're there and that you're offering the ability to come and hang out and, you know, communicate and play each other and have a good time. Um, that's definitely something that, as a magic store, that's one of the main pools, um, is being able to communicate and have your Friday Night Magics there and things like that. Um, another one would be not being on the store locator. If you're not on the store locator, people can't really locate you and that brings you down by a lot. Um, and the other one would be not incentivizing. You want to make sure you're incentivizing. You want to incentivize why should these people come to my store? Why should these people buy my products? Why should these people spend Friday Night Magic here and not somewhere else? You know, you want to be incentivizing, whether it's with a fun attitude or, um, you know, whatever it might be, you want to incentivize for sure. Um, and another one would be failing to build on momentum. Whereas, like, a lot of Magic the Gathering stores will have their first few customers and so, They'll get more clients in, but they kind of base what they should be doing around the first customers, and that's not a very smart idea. You want to follow the trends, and you want to see as the different people come in and the different things that they're looking for and the different things that they need, you kind of want to move with it. You want to make sure that your magic store is kind of moving with the audience as they go, because as we know, it's, it's ever-expanding, and it's always expanding. It's uh, there's always new kinds of people, and every, everyone plays this, it, from jocks to um, single moms to doctors to um, children to, you know, everyone in between. So there's a lot of differentiation there, and you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Uh, and another one would be failure to build community, and that kind of goes with what I was saying with, like, um, having a social presence and also hosting events and stuff. Um, if you're not really building up your community and you're not really connecting with your community, uh, then you don't really have one, and that really doesn't bring in a lot of people. That doesn't really put in an incentive to really come to your shop and to be shopping around and spending your time and money there when you could easily do it somewhere else or online. Um, and another one would be... Basically, you want to make sure 
that you're not making it all about the money. With magic, magic is very immersive and it's very much about the art and the fun and the interaction and the community that's around it. And you want to make sure that you're not letting money be the first part of that. When you open up a magic store, you have to realize that, you know, why are you opening it up? Because if you're opening it up just to make money, that might not be the best business sense. It will be the best uh, option if you are um, passionate about magic and also would like to make money. It's definitely a good um, situation to put yourself into. Um, you know, in my opinion, I just feel like when, when things are too much about money, it kind of takes away from the fun and it takes away from really the magic that's going on there. And you want to make sure that you're not doing that. You want to make sure that you're actually, you know, that you're, you want the positivity and the creativity to still be there and you want to definitely enhance that and encourage that and you definitely want to do it inside of your store. And if you do do that inside of your store, you'll have more people, you'll have more recognition and you'll have a better um, relationship with your customers. So yeah, that's my uh, video on some tips, uh, basically some ways to not fail as a magic store. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Maybe there's something that I missed or um, you know something like that. And I can't wait to hear some feedback and thank you guys for watching.